Welcome to Forum 360 on Fusion, your PBS channel. This is Leslie Unger, your host today. Thank you for joining us on our global outlook with a local view. We are co-sponsored by the Akron Jewish Community Center. We used to say it was 90 miles from Florida, that exotic, appealing country of Cuba. Then Diana Nyad says it is 103 miles and she should know because she swam every mile of it. So 90 or 103 miles, it is still exotic and still appealing. The country of Cuba evokes strong feelings almost 60 years after Castro came to power. As part of the 2014 normalization of relations, some U.S. companies can now do business in Cuba. A local Northeast Ohio company is one of those companies doing business or trying to do business in this country where you can dance salsa or you can eat salsa. Welcome to Mark Cheplowitz, the Wizard of Oz, to Forum 360. Buenos dias. Como esta? Buenas noches. Is it Hola. nighttime? Well, it could, somewhere. That's the only thing I know. <laughs> it, is, it is nighttime <laughs> somewhere, and you know about what I know. So, hola. And, and, um, hola. That's right. Uh, and mucho gracias. So let me ask you, why Cuba? You have produced shows in different parts of the world. So why did you want to go to Cuba? Well, because it... It's there. And if it's, you say it's there... <laughs> it is there. It is there. And actually, I don't know if you know this, but um, we have a little family history with Cuba. Nothing I can talk about here, but... Uh, so what, it, were you in the, in the witness protection no, program? No, it was a long time ago. It was actually involved my parent, my mother. So, but that was a long, long time ago. And, uh, but my point is, it had come up over and over as we grew up. So there was an interest there. Mm -hmm and uh, curiosity mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of that is family you know folklore and whatever so i wanted to go there and i had an opportunity so i went for it you know i can understand that because my parents honeymooned in cuba where three week honeymoon wow which we don't even have today's world no one takes right. a three week honeymoon but right. um in cuba um you know obviously right before the trouble started in the 50s but um so i can kind of understand you grew up hearing about it right well before we actually talk about it I want to know how did you physically get to Cuba? Because when you know Americans weren't allowed to, they had to go to Canada and they had to pretend they were going with right. you know a group from Canada or right. Europe or something. So right. how did you physically? Because I don't think you swam like Diana Nyad. I don't think you swam the 103 miles. So how did you get to Cuba? Actually, I taped a boat together <laughs> and I I paddled over there because I thought I would return the favor. But actually. Um, we had an opportunity to do something with a meetup group. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a meetup. It's a collection of clubs under a meetup umbrella. And we started a group. We? Um, myself and my meetup members of people. Locally. That, locally or, okay. that like to travel, but travel by small plane. So one of the exotic ideas we were throwing around was, hey, let's get in a small plane and let's go to Cuba. Well, in March of this year, it was possible to do that. So in the back of my mind, I thought, well, if I'm gonna go there more for an educational and a people-to-people -people thing, uh, then why don't I try to wrap a little business around that and see if I can, while I'm there, set up vendors and look at uh, venues and things like that, whereas I may be able to, at some point really soon, be able to take corporate clients there for their uh, meetings or their, uh, maybe they want to have just a, a, a group event there of some kind. So uh, I kind of packaged it all together. So, so when, I flew a small plane with five other people to Cuba. So when you say you flew. You, I did the driving. You were the pilot. I was the pilot. Okay, so. And back. That's not your profession, they let you out or sent you home, one of the two. <laughs> but that's not your profession, but you no. fly a small plane, so you physically flew. That's correct. So, okay, so how long, it, it's 100 miles, so how long was the flight? Well, I picked up the aircraft, I was already in Florida. So the flying club that I belonged to sent three planes. I met them in Key West, I was already in South Florida. So I jumped in the driver's seat, if you will, and it took me You flew from Key West? From Key West to Havana's airport. Okay, so... In about 
45 minutes. Wow, 45 minutes right. is all it takes. Yeah. All that we've heard from and our whole lifetime. And 45 minutes back. So you are getting, you, you're in their airspace. Correct. I'm does talking it to sound, the controllers. Okay, does it sound different than if no, you're in airspace? There's, a, there's a, a, an accent, of course, but the international aviation language is English. Oh, okay. So it doesn't matter. I can go to China and I can hopefully communicate, but there is, you know, uh, accents and things, and they call aviation terminology sometimes a little different. I had no trouble at all. And there's a great story about that, too, because which we will get to in a minute, this event that I did there, the controller that was talking to me on the radio was an honored guest at the event I produced. So he came up to me and he went, I know you, I recognize your voice. Uh, I, I talked to you on the, I was the tower controller. I don't know, I don't know which one is his side job and which one is his real job. What do you mean? Well, he was the guest, right? And he, he was- He was a guest at the event I was producing. Right, right. And he was also, his real job- Is being the controller. Right, but I will put this all into a, Nice little bow for you here in a minute. Well, before you do that, tell us what it is that you do that you think you can or want to do in Cuba. Well, in the, right now in the United States, Caribbean, and Europe, Wizard of Oz, spelled A-H-S, uh, we produce shows. There are events, galas, television, uh, any number of types of corporate projects, not too much social, but... A, so a lot of corporate can you projects. Tell us a show that we would know that you produce so that we can understand what you do. Um, for 15 years, I was one of the uh, producers of the enshrinement ceremony for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Okay. The halftime okay, so. shows and ESPN and NFL Network were also my clients. In Cleveland area, I was the grand opening producer of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the most recently, the chandelier lighting ceremony at Playhouse Square. Okay, so that's what, when you talk about producing, you're talking about producing any one of those kind right. of productions. Right, and candidly, there's usually a television component attached to it, so it's that side as well. Okay, so you, you, you're, you and your meetup group decide that you want to go to Cuba and you think that, well, I'll see if I can maybe talk about doing some business there at the same time. Right. So what it, kind of business did you foresee yourself doing in Cuba? Well, in the long-term planning, I wanted to be one of the most qualified people, companies, to do events there. Maybe a company wanted to launch a product there. Maybe uh, they want to have an incentive travel trip there. Maybe they wanted to have a meeting there just to say they did it. Went to uh, Cuba. Rent to Cuba. So I wanted to be in the forefront of that. <laughs> Okay. Well, that was down the road, but I needed to be a forward thinker and get all of these vendors and contacts and venues uh, so that I was ready to go. So this is March, right, of 2017. Mm -hmm. Okay. So did you find a lot of other Americans like you? I mean, like, were you stumbling over Americans with the same kind of idea of wanting to get on the ground floor in Cuba? There's a lot of people talking about it. I didn't see a lot of people actually doing it, but while I was there... There are a lot of, there was a lot of individual travelers there, families. I, I have to tell you, there's very little English spoken there. They, they really are not biling, bilingual company, uh, country. It's easy for me to say. Uh, but it was refreshing to be at a cafe or at a Paladar or a restaurant and hear somebody talking with a New York accent or whatever. It was just refreshing. So it, it's, a comp it's a country in transition, no doubt. Now, I have to ask you, because we know when we hear about Cuba, I think the first thing that comes to most people's minds that we hear about are the cars. They're everywhere. That, that you know, yep. it's the They're cars there. from the 50s. That's right. Because they haven't been able to get any new cars, so all you see are these old cars. That's Did right. you see that? Uh, you can't not see them. Really? They're everywhere. They're their national treasure. My understanding is if you had five million dollars and wanted to buy one of those cars for five million dollars, they will not let it leave the country. Really? You just can't take them out of now, there. Now, are they still driving them? Or they, they are just driving them. Some on... are in different, uh, you know, stages so. of, of rehab, if you will. There are some beautiful specimens <laughs> and there are some shaky specimens. But I want to tell you, it's not just the 50s American cars. They have the Russian cars there from the 50s. Wow. The Lada automobiles and some of the other countries that are there. Now, I, I read that Airbnb couldn't wait to get into Cuba and start signing people up. But what about Uber? Like, do you know, do they have Uber or did you I, try I to? Uber relies on the Internet. They don't have Internet down there of any value. 
Um, there are hot spots. You can always tell where they are because there's groups of people congregating and the, the internet service that they do get is incredibly slow. slow. So I don't think Uber is ready for prime time there, anything like that. Now, what about their hotels? Did you stay in a hotel? I stayed both times I was there. I was there for site inspection for the show I was doing, and then I also stayed as part of that travel group. So um, both times I stayed at a private uh, uh, residence, if you will, okay. that is in the business of renting out rooms. So what was that like? I mean, it, was, it was it fine. the 50s? Was it the 60s? Was it the 90s? Was it the 2000s? What would you compare it to? Um, it, they were both, the f first time I was there, it was a very nice place. It was run by two women. They had three or four rooms. They provided breakfast. It was a renovated, one of the older homes that was renovated. It was nice. It was really nice. And they were very nice. Didn't speak a word of English, but they were great. The next time with the group, uh, and we can talk more about this, some of the hotel plans came off the rails, which is very easy to do there. And we stayed at a not so nice, it wasn't terrible, but it, it was probably at the lower limits. Again, uh, a guy that rents out his, mm -hmm. his apartments, his rooms. Hot and cold water? Oh, yeah. Did you see anything, anything crawling in no. your bed? No. no. You okay. know what? First of all, the people there are very nice. Number two, it's, it's, it's pretty clean. clean. It's pretty clean. They have, uh, you know, a lot of people think uh, Cuba is third world. It's not third world. It's maybe second world. Uh, but it's not what you think. Um, it's a lot more modern than you think. It's just that you got to remember, this is a, uh, a, a country that is primarily owned by the government. So what did you find when, and I know that, uh, that a lot of the, the Cubans couldn't speak English, but what did you get the feeling that they thought of Americans? They were welcoming. Uh, yeah. At least everybody that I talked to, they couldn't be nicer. Uh, they are very happy people. They accept their world, if you will. Happy to see Americans or other tourists. Remember, other tourists have been going there for years. Long it's time. just a new thing for right. us. Right, right. Um, they are excited. Uh, they, they, a lot of them are getting into tourism, if nothing else, just to make ends meet because they don't make a whole lot no, through don't. the government. But they know how to make those dollars stretch, you know, for their budgets. Now, did you find that, or legally, if you want to do business in Cuba, do you need an internal partner? Yeah, well, I do, uh, at least where I'm at right now. Um, I have to work with a uh, U.S. based, and a uh, and they talk in some ways to a uh, Cuban based, and it's it's this is not easy. It took a lot of time just to get to the first dot of a whole line of dots that you connect in order to make you know, an event happened. It's, and, and let me tell you, it is fraught with, um, how do I say this politely, experiences. That will all be come in handy, and we're gonna hear about those in just a minute. Today, we are looking at Cuba from a different perspective. A Northeast Ohio businessman who has gone there recently in this calendar year to do business um, as an American doing business in Cuba. So we welcome uh, Mark Cheplowitz, Wizard of Oz, uh, to hearing a more recent update about Cuba. So what if your magic wand worked and you could do whatever kind of business you wanted to, what kind of business would you want to do in Cuba? How much time would you want to spend in Cuba? I love it there. I love it there. I love it there. Um, I love it there for so many reasons. I love it there because the food is great. I love it there because the people mm -hmm. are nice and for the most part, genuine. I like it there because it's novel. I like it there because it's close. I don't have to fly a half a world away in order to do my shows. And oh, by the way, I can get back really fast. I, I like it for a lot of reasons. But now, every time you went, did you fly your own plane? No, uh, the first time I went, I was stunned at how easy it was. At the mm -hmm. time, Spirit Airlines was going. Like I said, I was already in Florida. And so I needed to go there and do the meetings and have the site inspections. Called up Spirit. Uh, first, I did it online. I booked it. I don't even want to tell you. It was $50 round trip from Fort Lauderdale. Wow. Yeah, $50 round trip. Your first time? My first time. Did it change over? Well, it's, it's come and gone. And Spirit, I understand, pulled out because they weren't getting the traffic that they thought they were going to. And I don't even know what's happened since uh, President Trump you know, changed the rules there a little bit. Right. But, right. Uh, 
but it was pretty easy. They did the they did the um, the license, you know, the the visa for you to come in. They have a partner that does it. They transfer you to them, do the whole thing. It's waiting for you at the airport. I mean, it it couldn't be more painless. No lines. No messing around, not on our side, not on their side. Did you have a lot of questions you had to answer well, going I or coming back? Well, I made myself crazy looking at all the things I thought I was going to need to know going there the first time. And they made it so easy. And this is not a plug for Spirit. They're not going there anymore as far as I know right now. It just went, I don't know if you know this, but you have to have an um, insurance card from, the, uh, from Cuba. Oh. And yeah. uh, $3.50. But you have to know where to get it. Sure. And you have to have it before you land. You have to have it in your possession, this, this temporary insurance card. Spirit took care of all that. It was great. It was great. Now, there are companies out there now, if you were to go by yourself, they call them, I think there's actually a name for this, but um, I'm going to call it Cuba Handling or Cuba whatever, and they take care of a lot of this for you at a cost. In 2014, normalization of relations between Cuba and the United States, um, contractors and specialists can provide goods and services in certain categories. So how do you fit into what is now allowed either under um, 2014 or you know, with the rollback of normalization? Um, how are you going to be able to continue to do business under like what category do you fit? Well, if you look through the categories, there's either 12 or 14 of them. Yeah. Public and, housing, and transportation, one, water management, yeah. waste management, non-nuclear electricity generation. And there's more. But uh, the one that I thought I was going to go under okay. uh, was the wrong one. It turned out to be like political activism when you read down through the paragraph. I went, uh, no, that's not me. So. Uh, we go under what they call people-to-people -people license. And before Trump's change, mm -hmm. uh, you could go pretty much as an individual. Mm -hmm. You're there to make connections on a cultural mm -hmm. level. You're there to make exchanges, which is how we went both times. Um, I was just going in advance of this big group that was coming down. So, um, but that, that's the license. Now, you can't really go as an individual. The no. big thing now is you have to go with the group. And you have to, they have all these restrictions. I'm not even about to go there and, and explain a lot of these. It's evolving for me as well. So are you going to try to continue to, to keep a, a footprint there in some way? We have looked into getting the license from the U.S. Treasury to be an authorized travel entity so that um, because uh, we, we don't do anything, you know, under the rug kind of thing. We're always mm -hmm. very sure. above board and sure. we're going to see. But candidly, I've had a lot of interest, but no takers. So, and I can't tell you why I don't have a lot of take, I don't have any takers yet, but I sure have a lot of people want to talk to me about it. So I, mm -hmm. I'd like to think at some point it's going to kick in mm -hmm. and I want to be ready. Got it. Now you talked about the food and you talked about the people. So what can you tell us? What were some of the favorite foods that you ate and did you eat street food? I did. I did. And here's the thing. I like Cuban food in the United States better than I like Cuban food in Cuba. How it's just like China. Okay, nope, I've never Chi been to China. Chinese food in China yeah. is nothing like Chinese takeout here. Okay. Nothing. Well, which one do you like better? Well, it, you know, it's not so much better. We are so much, we're used to right. what we've grown up thinking right. is Chinese right. or what you've grown up thinking is Cuban. Right. So how is Cuban food different in Cuba? Well, first because of all... I'm going to guess it's more authentic in Cuba. Oh, well, I would think so. Yes. So first of all, you have to think about Cuba and how Cuba is set up. If you have any business, including restaurants, that are uh, at all on the radar, you know, you've been around a while, you're doing business, whatever, mm -hmm. probably 51% of your restaurant is owned by the government. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Then they have these other restaurants called Paladars, that are privately owned, haven't quite got on the radar yet, or they're working something out or whatever, those are the restaurants you want to focus on. And this government thing, it's, you know, it's like going to the post office. <laughs> you know, you've, you've stood in the line at the post office. I was just there. It's the government kind of feel you mm -hmm. get there. So Paladars are livelier. They're probably more creative with the food. Um, I won't say the variety is a whole lot different, so but how but their a, preparation is. As a foodie, what did you like best? Out of what you liked, although it was different, what did you like best? 
Um, there was this one restaurant I went to more than once because I wanted to try as many different restaurants mm -hmm. as I could. And there was this one restaurant that I liked that did something where they made it more of a your own personal family style meal. And they would bring, it was a, a platter of proteins, right? Beef, pork, mm -hmm. um, seafood, chicken. And then they had all the usual sides, the, uh, the rice and beans and the plantains and the whatever. But the seasoning and the way they presented it and the restaurant itself, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. And it was priced great. I mean, you can really get uh, now, in who, trouble there price-wise if you're not paying attention. Who could you tell? Is they are foreigners or locals? Can, can locals afford to eat there? Uh, locals cannot afford. I don't think so. Uh, but they were foreigners. But they were Spanish-speaking. Okay. I mean, we were one of the few people that spoke in English there. Now, but there was this other great place that we went to, I have mm -hmm. to tell you. It was in a town called Vinales. And it was... How far from Havana? Uh, two and a half hours by old car. Really? Yes, because the old cars I, are taxis. I, I, didn't, I didn't know how to think about how big Cuba was. Cuba is huge. Really? The island of Cuba is huge. Huh. I mean, it's a fooler. They have, what, six or seven international airports? I mean, it is a gigantic place. Wow. We think of it as this little yes, island do. in the we Caribbean. Do. I'm here to tell you, and I can't even begin to give you the square miles or any of that, but I think if you put the, the southeast <laughs> corner, uh, south, yeah, southeast corner at the tip of Florida, and you drape it across the United States, I think you're into Missouri or something. Really? Uh, maybe it's not that far, but, but it far. seems that way. Okay. It's Bigger than Israel. And you drive everywhere, and it's two-lane highways in old cars with no air conditioning. Just pointing that out. And I was there in March. I can only imagine what it is there. Yeah. And it's windy there all the time. So we went to this town called Vinales. And it's where the cigar factory is. You've heard of UNESCO? It's yes. a UNESCO site. And they have mountains there. So we were there with the mountains. We went through a tour of the caves, you know, in the mountains and all of that. But the best part of that was the family-style farm dinner that they arranged for us. That was, the, that, that was the highlight of both trips. We sat at this big, long table, and they just kept bringing food. And it was one thing and, after and another. And did you even care? Did you ask, or did you just? Oh, of course I asked. Oh, OK. But I didn't care. But, you, but did you understand the answers? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, you knew what they you were, were eating. You know, it's more international there. So oh, okay. um, there were a lot more uh, English speaking So your there. very favorite dish? My very favorite, I didn't have a favorite dish. I loved them all. Loved I really all. didn't, I didn't have okay. a stand. I think, it, you know, in Havana, it was that, that one restaurant with this great, you know, uh, presentation. Did you feel the politics of the country while you were there? When I was in Beijing, I felt the politics of the mm -hmm. country. I felt the, 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 the feeling of all of the, the, the police, the, the, you know, their army, whatever, everywhere. I could feel that. Could you feel the politics of the country? No, it was pretty subdued. It was pretty subdued. And the crime in Cuba is virtually non-existent. Yeah. Well, you let's know, just say you only commit a crime once. Well, I, I, I can't speak to that. But I can tell you this. You, you would walk in the old city. And if you walked in a neighborhood like that in any town in the United States, your hair would be up on the back of your neck. You'd be reaching for your pistol, even if you don't own one. And you would be totally freaked out. Here, nobody cares. But you felt safe. Oh, it, it was, nobody cares. It, it's just so laid back. And, and there's virtually no crime there. Now, in just the couple minutes that we have left, you're Mr. Entertainment, man. You're a producer. So did you see entertainment? And what did you think of their kinds of entertainment? Um, they're really big into music, uh, Cuban music, as you can mm -hmm. imagine. They have a, a floor show, like a Tropicana kind of floor show. I skipped that because everybody told me, you can skip that. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, the music is lively. They had a great band in the Havana Rum uh, Factory. Uh, it's called Havana Club. And we all did um, Havana Club Rum Tasting. And the band got better and better as we sat there and tasted it. I just don't that. understand how that happened. Imagine that. Yeah. Now, what um, you talked about the people and, and the food, that the food was not like, you know, Cuban food that you thought. But in one of my last questions, what surprised you most about your trips to Cuba? Um, it was a combination of things. It was uh, that it wasn't third world. It was more second world or one and a half world. Mm -hmm. They were a lot more modern than I expected. Um, how large the country is was a mm -hmm. big surprise. 
uh, how little English is spoken there, and the Spanish that is spoken there is doesn't work real well on the translator, as I found out. Just because you have Google Translate, and if you're lucky enough to get a, a connection, connection, it, it, they still don't understand it real well. So I thought that was interesting. So what's the first thing? My very last question. What's the first thing that you wanted when you came back? Like a shower or a hamburger? Was oh, there anything that you missed? When I, you were yeah, gone? I wanted to book my next ticket back. All right. <laughs> this small country of 11 million people has given us the conga, rumba, mojitas, black beans and rice, and Havana nights. Cuba, known for its white beaches and tobacco fields, is more a part of our daily discussions than ever before. The Cuba-U.S. relations are now normalized, kind of. In the very first wave of businesses to begin to do business in Cuba is the Wizard of Oz here in Northeast Ohio. Although, though you may not fly your own plane when you go to Cuba, we've learned a little bit about what it is like in this new wave of normalization. Thank you to Mark Cheplowitz for joining us on Forum 360. Thank you for joining us on our Global Outlook with a local view. Forum 360 is brought to you with support from Electric Impulse Communications, Kim and Harvey Nelson, Rubber City Radio Group, Acronist.com, Hudson Cable, Medical Mutual of Ohio, Form 360 supporters, and the Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron.